Garrett here from Garden First Cannabis. I'm a grower, a music junkie, and an avid outdoorsman. I'm always looking for new ways to better myself and my garden. Join me as we go behind the scenes to meet the incredible people behind today's most successful cannabis brands and hear the stories of their journey. This is Deep Roots. What's up Growers Network? We're finishing up a hike here at Red Rocks Open Space, about to head over to the Raina Cultivation Facility. The face, the queen herself, Priscilla, couldn't make it. We're excited to meet her family and check out their grow. Thankfully, she left us keys to the queendom. We're about to go check out that facility right after this. Major step taken in the city of Linwood tonight where the city council just approved 13 businesses for marijuana licenses and only one woman made the cut. Joining me now is Priscilla Vilches. She's the CEO of Cali Premium Produce. I live a very lavish lifestyle. I want a cultivation and a production license. Alrighty, folks, we are back on the zoo <laughs> with one of the leading ladies in the cannabis industry, Ms. Priscilla Vilches. Welcome. Hey, welcome. Welcome. I am a young Latina female. Being so dominant and trailblazing this new multi-billion dollar industry, I am savage. At first, people thought I was crazy to even attempt to get into the industry, and now I'm considered a genius. Go figure. I am the cannabis queen. Well, I know in, in our crowd cast, you know, I met Priscilla, she's a, one of the most vibrant personalities I've ever seen oh, in this yeah. industry, you know, definitely like makes a splash wherever wherever she goes. Uh -huh. um, I imagine she's out there doing that right now, which is why she couldn't be with us. No, no, she really wanted to be there. here. It's just that right now we're with uh, Cali uh, opening up and right. starting construction. And now that we found out that New York is actually uh, the next uh, big mm -hmm. city to get, uh, hopefully, we're gonna try to get licensed out there. And uh, I mean, that's what she's looking for out there, like, you know? Knock um, on knocking on doors it's and trying to make it happen. So you guys are running like a, a whole family, family owned, family run business. What's, uh, what does everybody do? I handle, I handle the security every morning. I get there about 5.30, 6 o'clock in the morning. I open up. I just make sure everybody, you know, is well taken care of. Then, you know, we don't have any, any um, bad situations happening for all of us. Make everybody feel safe. Yeah, of course. Wow. Security is super important. Yeah. It's like we're housing a bank. Yeah, all cash business. Yeah. You know, still stuck here till this till this next bill pass. Hopefully, we get some movement on safe banking because I'm pretty ready to accept checks. I don't know about you guys. <laughs> no, no. I think we all are, man. Yeah. It's yeah. uh, it's a must. It's gonna happen. It's gonna it's happen happening. soon. It's happening. It's we're already here. There's no going back anymore. This is a new billion dollar business. Yeah, and it's here to stay. Yeah. So how do you get connected with the family? Are you are you family as well? Are you a cousin? Are you you know? You know what? Basically. Basically, basically. I'm, I've known Priscilla for gosh, 12, 13 years probably. She's like my sister basically. Yeah. You know? And we're like twins. I mean, he says that we're twins. So, whatever. We get but all. But, but I'll be honest. So you're really quiet and subdued too. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. <I'm> chill. Right. <laughs> Oh man, let's dig into some of this sushi. It looks beautiful. So good. Sushi one. So this is, is your guys' spot? spot? Yes. Yeah. This this place, everybody in Vegas knows because it closes at five o'clock in the morning. Oh yeah. So all the rave people, all the people at the casinos. You know, right. Like, you get back from the club and you go out to a nice yes. sushi dinner, right? Because all the taco shops are already closed. I mean, you're always looking for something that's open late, so. Yes. As a what matter of fact, spot? Yo, hey, June, well, come on. 5 a.m. open early, I hey, guess. Hey, this, this, <laughs> this, is, this is the owner, June. Hey, June. Hey, this guy always treats us like Everything family. Everything is beautiful here. so far, man. Oh, my God. It's awesome, man. It's amazing. Like butter. Right? Butter, you like it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Enjoy it, okay? Thank you, June. Thanks, June. Hey, June. You know, the team, the people, is an important part of your process. Like, where did the brand 
Reina come from? Like, what what is what is Reina? So, Reina in Spanish means queen. And Priscilla, when she gained her name, people started calling her the queen of Hollywood, which is how she got her Instagram handle, well, the Hollywood Queen. I'm not sure if you guys remember when uh, they switched the sign in Hollywood to where it says Holly Hollywood. So that's how she got the name. She saw it and she said, Hollywood Queen. So she came up with that. Being that that was her Instagram back in the days, which is basically decided to, instead of having a brand that says Queen, maybe just Reina, more Hispanic because of the, the Hispanic Queen culture, culture. represent yes. culture, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, so we basically say, you know what, Reina, I mean, and it's just very powerful. It just sounds beautiful, you know? And, I, don't, I, don't, uh, I don't know if you guys know that the, the police department from Los Angeles questioned her about that because somebody changed the sign. Mm -hmm. And they thought it was her? They thought it was her. And she was like, I had nothing to do with it. I mean, she probably was, but I'm <laughs> <laughs> No, I got a feeling she'd tell us about it if she was I'm, a part I'm of sure it. she would. <laughs> I go, stay tuned for that one. I don't know about that one. You know, good queens got to be queens for the people, right? Cheers, cheers to Cannacribs and Canna Reina. Cribs and Reina, baby. Woo, cheers. We hope this isn't the last time we see you guys. No, not at all. Appreciate you taking some time to uh, show me around uh, the mother room. Tell me a little bit about what strains we got going back here. All right, so we have probably about three dozen strains, uh, roughly that many number of mothers. Uh, we have a lot of them right now in rock wool, but we're kind of rotating things into cocoa, 10 gallon pots. So you're growing some of these mothers in rock wool right now, but you say you're transitioning over to cocoa? We're gonna do half of our garden in cubes, another half in cocoa, just because I'm a cocoa dude. I really, really enjoy cocoa. And we get some pretty big yields with that stuff too. Absolutely, it's a forgiving media. You know, you can definitely pull a lot of weight out of cocoa. Renewable resource. Yep, yeah, exactly. Yeah, five times the water. When you're cutting clones, um, about how many are you cutting a week to get this place filled out? We'll do five to 600 a week. Okay. And typically our rooms, we have four flower rooms, so we harvest every other week. So it's a perfect kind of like eight, eight week flower cycle. And usually about three, it's three to 500 per room, depending on the room size. So 600 keeps us pretty much caught up. Okay, cool. So you cut a little bit of extra, so you have some leeway, move the strongest ones through the cycle. Only the strong survive. You know, are you cloning into rock wool? Are you doing aeroponics? What system are you using to actually propagate? Up until probably, you know, a few months ago, it was just all, you know, clone domes with, uh, you know, rock wool and stuff like that. And then with the, with the cocoa and stuff, you know, we want to we want to clone a little bit bigger clones. And so we brought in the easy cloners, you know, and nice. the big ones. They got like 12 gallon reservoir, 100, 128 clones. So for, for cultivating, everyone knows like in commercial, it's busy. So being able to set those things in, a little bit of clear res, a little bit of clonex. Of the genetics you're running, you know, what's, what's your favorite uh, to be running as far as in the garden? Oh man, I'm a huge fan of Wedding Cake. I wedding mean, cake. I know it's out there a ton, but it's yeah. out there a ton for a reason, you know? It's gonna be one of those legacy strains, just like Gorilla Glue or Jack or I mean, our Straw Nanner, you know, back in the day. But, uh, you know, we have a Wedding Cake strain in here that we phenoed out from a bunch of Jungle Boy seeds and stuff. So you're, you, you pop some Jungle Boy seeds. Are there any other breeders that you like to work with? Um, yeah, actually there's, uh, I don't know them personally, but I'm a big fan of Compound Genetics out of Oregon. Uh, yep. I've seen them on, you know, some, some shows and stuff and I have a good friend that lives up there. And so, yeah, he has an Orange Crush strain. I've seen a lot of his new strains and the guy, he, that guy knows what's up. What up, Randy? What's up, Eric? How you doing, dude? I hear you're the king of veg. Yes, I am. That is me. So we're here in the veg room over at Reina. It looks like you guys got a lot of really healthy plants and a few different stages in here. How many plants roughly do you have in this room at any given time? 
Uh, we could have anywhere from 500 to upwards to 2,000 plants at any given time. How long is your veg cycle? You know, you move from propagation, um, you come in here. How big are you trying to build them uh, before moving into flower? Um, usually about 36 inches. Okay. Um, it usually will sit here for a good four weeks. Okay. Uh, before we roll them out into flower, try to get multiple tops in as well in that time frame. So nice. set them off good. I saw these units that you have going through the center of this room um, and they're unlike anything I've ever seen in another grow facility. I imagine these are doing some kind of cooling for you. Oh yeah, they're, uh, they're called Cernas and uh, they're basically a evaporation cooling system that condensates the surrounding water as it uh, cools the room down. So basically it acts like an AC unit, which allows us to regulate our temperature in this room. Cool, so it's like a commercial scale evaporative cooler. Exactly. So I know you guys have some pretty stringent pesticide standards here in Nevada. Um, what are you using for uh, pest management? Our main product that we're using is Green Cleaner. Okay. Um, that's what we're using for our IPMs, for our veg, um, and pretty much for our entire growth. So I'll usually do about a two and a half ounces to a five gallon bucket. Um, it usually roughly takes me about two five gallon buckets to spray this entire room. Okay. Uh, so I love it. and um, The plants almost like are praying after the yeah, spray. Yeah. So do you know specifically how uh, how Green Cleaner works and you know what, what makes it so versatile? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, you know, we have Dan here from Green Cleaner and he'd be able to tell you everything you need to know about it. Cool. In a world of pests. I'm getting buried over here, Lieutenant Dan. I'm getting buried. We got thrips, we got russet mites, we got every sort of know-how out here. All home, seeing lost, until... I'm gonna need a Green Cleaner airstrike stat! Copy, Private. Green Cleaner strike incoming. Mr. Green Cleaner Dan, fancy to see you here. Yeah, great to see you again. It's always nice to see a room this green and this clean. It's always good to be in Vegas, seeing what these guys here at Reina especially are doing with their veg, um, keeping things nice and clean. Green Cleaner is obviously a really important part of that. Uh, just really stoked to see what's going on. Sweet, well let's go down and check out some of these younger plants and see you know, how they're responding to the sprays. I mean, it definitely seems like a pretty clean room in here. You know, Green Cleaner, we say it doesn't leave a residual per se, but you'll always see a little sheen on the leaves after a treatment. That's gonna break down and, and go away over time. But with standard applications, you know, the plants always just look healthier and happier. It's really hard to get complete total coverage with a spray application. So being thorough is important, but you know, once you've done a couple of treatments, you're getting those last little lingering pests and, right. and, and also the eggs that stay behind that, you know, maybe you missed the, the treatment before. So being persistent with it and just being vigilant will really help maintain those populations to nothing. Green Cleaner um, can be definitely used as a drench. You know, you can uh, mix it up, soak the tops, you know, on these plants, you would just water right on top of the cube. Um, we learned from some of our customers that they were doing that, you know, years ago with the Green Cleaner. And so we developed a product called Root Cleaner. We felt like if you were loading up these plants and these, these rock wool blocks, um, with a bunch of soybean oil long term, that wouldn't be all that great. Right. Um, so we, we dropped the oil content down, up the alcohol content a little bit, and we just feel like that's a better uh, solution for the root zone. So you can attack root aphids, thrips larvae, and then as far as the spray goes, um, you're able to hit spider mites, as, as, as I know, but uh, you know, does it, you know, the, the dreaded broad and russet mite. Are you able to, to knock yeah. stuff out with green I mean, cleaner? anything from powdery mildew to the, your standard two spot, to your broad and russet. The broad and russets require a little more work. Right. Um, they're just a tougher, smaller bug. So what we recommend is you take that green cleaner dosage up to two ounces per gallon. Right. And that's when we start saying, you know, two, three days consecutively of that heavy treatment, making sure you're being very thorough, you know, undersides of the plants. Right. You know, start your spray low, 
Really focus that sprayer, get the angle tip wand and get under there. We can also do a dunk. Um, oh yeah. So yeah, I mean, with especially when you're bringing clones into a, a new room or, right. or you got clones from a, a buddy, wherever you got your clones, make a five gallon bucket of green cleaner solution and dunk that entire thing, root ball and all. So being thorough really is the key with products like Green Cleaner. Dan, it's great seeing you as always. You too, Garrett. Hope you have a good rest of your trip. Enjoy your time on the golf course. Make sure to spray some of that Green Cleaner on the green, make it slide all the way into the hole. Hey, we need to get them using some, I think. <laughs> I think so, man. Let's get out of here. Garrett. Reggie, nice to meet you, Garrett. Pleasure, man. Thanks for taking some time to show me around the flower room. No problem, man. So I'm looking around in this room. I see some familiar faces. Uh, definitely these Quest dehumidifiers. I've been running them in my facility. Almost every facility I've ever been to is running them. You know, what's been your experience with using them? I have the same reasons as you. Quest has always been reliable with me. Always keeping my rooms nice and dry, preventing any mold. And you know, they're American made we can get hands on as easy as that. Exactly, quick yeah. shipping, great, quick, customer yeah, service, great customer service, and uh, you know, proper humidity in the room most Definitely. importantly. Keeps it on lock. Quest is the best. Quest is the best. All right, so you guys are doing a lot of new canopy management strategies to fill out uh, you know, the flower canopy a little more. Yes. Um, I know when it comes to hitting more weight, uh, it's really important to be tailoring your feed for yeah. different parts of the cycle. What are you guys uh, using for nutrient regimen here? Oh, for nutrient regimen, you know, we've been running advanced nutrients for the past two years now. Throughout the first couple weeks, you know, we hit it kind of like a vegetative mix because it's the transition, you know what I mean? Right. But as soon as we get to week three and four, you know, we hit it with the big bud and then we hit it with uh, the Sensizyme and they, it all runs through the drip system very clean and plants, they, they love it. As far as, uh, you know, nutrient shifts as you move from veg into this stage, you know, what are you guys using and how are you tweaking things throughout the cycle to, to push those yields? For vegetative, you know, we're, we're running the Sensi Grow A and B, and you know, with our, our Cal Mag, and we're also running some B52, which is, you know, some vitamins. Mm -hmm. And as we transition to flower, you know, we run the Bloom A, Bloom B, and you know, we run uh, Cal Mag as well. Right. Um, and we know we also throw in the uh, Big Bud. Well, that's awesome, man. I really appreciate you taking the time with me today. I'm stoked to get out of here, find a dispensary, find some of this beautiful flower and smoke it for myself. Hey, my trill ass trellisers. Did you know that the average 10,000 square foot growing operation spends about $20,000 a year on trellis netting? If you're a commercial grower, we know you need to spend that money on the finer things in life. You know, like having your own Netflix account. Our customers save 30% on their trellis netting by switching to Common Culture Trellis. So buy your next roll at growershouse.com and for bulk orders, email pro at growershouse.com to get a custom quote for all Canna Cribs viewers. What up, Frank? How you doing? How's it going, Garrett? We're here in packaging and trimming. Got our gloves and our masks on. Keep your product nice and clean for testing. Uh, what are we working with today? Uh, this is some lava cake. This is definitely some uh, post-harvest weed. We got it down to 10% moisture content. Uh, lava cake is a strain. We're gonna be packing eight, 3.5 grams. 
Well, sweet, I appreciate you letting us in today. I know you're busy, so, you know, while we talk about post-harvest, if you wanna package up some eighths, I can help you lid some stuff up and, you know, not, not dig into your day too much. All our scales are certified by the state of Nevada, agricultural. So one gram is a gram here, or an eighth will be an eighth as it comes out. Uh, we usually like packing our eighths between 3.7 to 3.5. So we'll give it that little extra 0.2 of a gram so that in case there's variations with uh, the Nevada air, it's being so hot out here, we try to show some love to our people. Right, give that homie hook up to everybody, right? Definitely. Well, sweet, I mean, this weed looks really beautiful. You were talking about the moisture content and the dryness, and you know, what's the harvest process like to get it from, from a flower room to where we're at right now? Uh, I would say keeping that dry room to your specific relative humidity, we dial it down from 65% uh, being the first day, dropping it down anywhere from five to 10%. So by the time it's ready to put in bins, we're pulling it down at 40, 35% relative humidity. Okay. Just when we hear that stem start snapping. So basically every few days, you're kind of ticking it down another 5% till you get to your moisture. Um, once it's done drying, uh, do you cure before you trim or do you bring it to the trim room before uh, before curing? How does that all work? So we kind of do like a hybrid. We cure as we trim. So okay. the time that we do use uh, to trim it up, it takes about a week. So we try to take that week an advantage, as an advantage so that we can have it cured for sale. So usually uh, it'll hang for a week in the dry room, bring it down to 45 to 35 degrees uh, relative humidity. Mm -hmm. um, and then put it into bins, cure it out for a week, and as it gets cured, we trim it, depending on how dry the strain is. So you're rocking these Harvest More trim bins. Um, you know, I've definitely seen them all around in a lot of grows. They've been a standard in the industry for a while. Uh, what made you go this route, um, you know, as far as, uh, as far as the way you guys trim? Well, basically, these two reasons right here, um, they kind of fit like a cup for your hands as you trim. You try to not make sure that all the excess gets the floor, so it's more of a after clean process. So I like these trays just because of that. Um, I don't have to have somebody hunched over. It kind of just lets your hands rest. As far as the packaging, and it's super important, especially you know when you're a top shelf brand. So you're saying four or five thousand jars a week. That's a lot of weed coming out of this facility. Uh, you know, how many trimmers and packagers do you have in here to to make sure that's all getting out the door? I, can, I imagine you can't do that all yourself. Right? Yeah, no, I call them my heroes. So basically. Uh, I got three heroes in my trim crew and about six uh, packagers. Um, they trim anywhere between three, three pounds to four pounds, depending on the nug structure. Well, Frank, thanks for taking the time to show me, uh, you know, everything from the post-harvest end and packaging. I think I'll take some of these jars I've made with me and get out of here. All right, we're here at the Paris Hotel in Las Vegas, Nevada, in front of their replica of the Arc de Triomphe, which was originally built in Paris in 1836. And over to our right, we've got the real-life Eiffel Tower, which was gifted to the city of Las Vegas to settle a gambling debt back in 1967 that the Prime Minister of France had. Little known fact, check it out. I had reservations here the other day and then I was too hungover and I wasn't able to make it. It's supposed to be the best brunch in Vegas. Catching a buzz and catching a Pokemon. All right, where's my Pokeballs? I'm here with Mickey Mouse, the owner of Walt Disney. They run the whole world. You ever heard of them? Morning, sir. You got a quite a busy store here for a Saturday morning. Yeah, we can be uh, we can be busy all the time. We're a 24-hour location, very close to the Las Vegas airport. Nice. Uh, well, tell me a little bit about the, the shop we're in right now. Uh, you know, what's your story? How'd you land here? Uh, my name is Josh Rank. I am the director of digital media and marketing with Nevada Made Marijuana. I've been with the company now for uh, almost two and a half years. We are vertically integrated here in Las Vegas. We have three dispensaries open, opening two more within the next year. Our production and cultivation facility are out in our sister city, Laughlin, over there. And uh, we're fortunate to be a bustling and happening, vibrant uh, dispensary here. Nice, super exciting to be part of a growing company. Seems like a lot of the shops around here in Nevada are, are vertically integrated. To be honest, I've been at the Raina Cultivation Facility all day, and I uh, you know, saw some pretty beautiful flower, and I'm hoping to you know, get some of that out of the shop and, and get to smoking. Oh, absolutely. In fact, we've got some right here. Not only do we have uh, their jarred flower, we also carry their pre-rolls. 
Uh, and we're fortunate to have been one of the very first dispensaries to carry the Rainer product in Las Vegas. We've been a brand partner with them for many years now and done some amazing things with them. That's awesome, yeah. I definitely got a good vibe from the whole crew there. Good family dynamic. Seems like they're in this industry for the right reason. You know, I didn't get a chance to meet her on this tour, but uh, you know, I spoke with her a little bit before we came out and seems like Priscilla's a really strong personality, a really, you know, vibrant uh, spirit in this industry. What's it been like working with uh, with somebody with that kind of power in a room? We're uh, we're really excited and, for and fortunate to know Priscilla. It's been amazing. We were able to bring the first blood drive to Nevada, sponsored by Reyna. It's really awesome that you know, she's extended that further into not just being luxury, but making an impact on the community and, and having this be you know, bigger than, than just a brand. Absolutely, 300%. For sure, well sweet, I appreciate it, man. Grab this weed. Perfect. Go get stoned and get out of your hair. Have a great day. Have a good one. Raina fam, I've never felt so welcome in my life. This has been so fun so far. I'm enjoying hanging out by the pool. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Cheers. Cheers. To the queen. To the, queen. To the Hollyweed queen. queen and to Raina. Yo, what are we smoking on today? We got the Black Mamba, right? The Black Mamba, you just hit it off the Blackwood. Let's try it, let's try it. Yeah, June rolled it earlier. It's, it's hitting, hitting hard and long. It's just not, it's a little bit windy and it's not it's going out. Well, it's not a small blunt. <laughs> Shit tastes great. So is that sativa, indica, what are we smoking? That's a hybrid indica dominant. Let me pass that one over. <laughs> Frank, how'd you fall you into this that, family, buddy? man? I helped her out with her final. We were just doing our shit. Helped her with her homework. Oh, funny me, I'm black. <laughs> and all like, did all her homework. Yeah. Walked her to her boyfriend, and then Ooh, following after wait, high school, wait, 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 go back. Along. So. You got what, four kids now? Two of them are doing doing this business with you. Are you a proud father? Of course. What? Who, who ain't gonna be proud when their daughter comes out on Forbes? A minority Can't Latina. Write that. Yeah. Fucking A. Right? Mm -hmm. But hey, I love you guys and I hope to God this we, is we've changed from numbers to five. Yeah. 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 Are we talking about like we're ready? I hope we exchange yeah. numbers and yeah. fucking, yeah. hey, let's do this again. Hey, that's a wrap, boys wrap. and girls. And girl. And girl. Thanks, guys. I am the cannabis queen. I think I went on like a bounty hunt with him one time. <laughs> no, no, no. Let me tell you. Legit, story. like I, I went told with him. I, 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 go, I go, do me a favor. I was babysitting, right? And I go, do me a favor. I go, jump in the car. Babysitting his daughter. She's like, what are we gonna do? I go, I'm gonna go arrest the guy. Babysitting. I'm pretty sure she's called Yeah, that's scary. <laughs> <laughs> Listen.